The current state of digital filmmaking has absolutely transformed the medium. We are seeing more filmmakers with less academic experience and brosumer equipment starting to get critical acclaim. Notable example of this is Shane Carruth with Primer and more specifically, Upstream Color. Not only was it self-produced and promoted, it was shot on a modified Panasonic GH2, which at the time was only a few thousand dollars. Shane Carruth's success is made even more impressive when you find out that he just never went to film school. He's actually a major in mathematics. There are a few more examples of these success stories, but that's just what it is, an example. These examples inspire many to go gung-ho and just make a film themselves without having to go to film school. And where is a better place than the World Wide Web to figure this all out? And now more than ever, specifically HTTPS colon front slash front slash www.youtube.com. That joke was bad. Basically, the internet can be better than college for acquiring knowledge on subjects for just talking about anything. For filmmaking, however, it's sort of a different playing field. Filmmakers are usually visual and auditory learners, and what's better than content creators teaching us basic and advanced techniques and skills at the convenience of a click? This is what is transforming filmmaking today, and will continue to. And I think it's for the better. The main question here is, where does this leave film schools and the traditional method of education for the medium? Right now, you can buy a Nikon D3300 for about $500 with a lens kit, and this is what you can do on it. Of course, this isn't how it was shot raw. With just a little bit of searching, you can find tutorials on cinematography tips, color grading, and effects tutorials on YouTube. Channels like Filmmaker IQ, Film Riot, and DSLR Guide are immediately in the first search results most of the time. These videos are usually quick and effective guides on whatever you want to do. There are also pages upon pages of other tutorials by other great film channels. In a guerrilla filmmaking mentality, they're great for quick learning. Color grading is usually something that is relatively complex to learn on your own, but there are a ton of great videos that have helped me through the years to understand how to do it effectively. There are tutorials for just about everything about filmmaking, especially for the basics. Thing is, it's just basics. Basics of filmmaking are usually learned through experience as well, also something that can be easily learned through film school. But the main difference here is cost. Don't worry, at the end of this video I'm going to talk about what you can only get at film school, just so I don't sound like I'm only bashing on them. Tutorials on the internet are changing all types of industries, and of course this is nothing new. The huge difference with filmmaking is subjectivity of craft and understanding film theory. For instance, you aren't going to go into the philosophical semantics or thematics of a car engine. Yes, I understand that there's design philosophies that can be deconstructed based on certain factors in the automobile industry from things like error and country order, but for the love of God, just bear with me for a second. You see, film falls into the magical subjective void called art, and there are a lot of channels that seem to agree with this notion, but also like to deconstruct, criticize, and analyze aspects of films, filmmakers, and filmmaking. I feel that some of these channels are actually just as effective and way more insightful in understanding filmmaking as much as basic tutorials in film school. I'm referring to channels like Every Frame of Painting, The Royal Ocean Film Society, Now You See It, Lessons from the Screenplay, and my personal favorite, Channel Chriswell. These content creators research and interpret many aspects of films and filmmakers to make us observe either something ingenious or insightful about the films we watch. A great example of this is Channel Chriswell's video on Andrei Tarkovsky. Chriswell tells us that the genius of Tarkovsky's cinematic language lies within his use of texture to express certain emotions visually and how they can stick in the audience's subconscious. Couple this with visual examples, this usually breeds inspiration in a filmmaker or a film connoisseur. Videos like these aren't just for flexing the creator's tight-ripped thinker peanut, they are also to allow the filmmakers watching the video to become introspective and further their own art while bringing appreciation for the masters of cinema. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of film professors showed off these videos to their class and encouraged them to go out and watch these channels. With so many perspectives and opinions around the net and the instant availability of them, I wouldn't be surprised that a lot more people are learning about cult movies and great directors through these analyses and deconstructions. Now, on the other side of art, there's a lot of classes I've taken where the focus is on the business aspect of it as well, mostly when it comes to learning editing. But I've learned editing way before in film school. But what can YouTube tell us? One of the biggest challenges in filmmaking is great editing. In this line of work, aesthetics and styles are constantly updating. It's becoming way easier for people to learn professional editing skills because of YouTube and other factors. 
Adobe After Effects tutorials have absolutely changed the landscape entirely. Coupled with the easy plugins you can download into Premiere and After Effects, it is now way easier to do cool motion graphics and effects. Something as complex as replicating VHS noise and aesthetics is now just as easy as downloading a plugin and there you go. Hell, if you're on their cell phone, they even made a free app. Now it seems anyone can make vintage found footage films. Editing software, especially the Adobe Creative Cloud, is becoming easier to acquire because of payment plans as well. Professional level software and equipment are becoming more widely available and affordable to the public, meaning the amount of freelance editors and motion graphics artists are inflating rapidly. Personally, the skill factor doesn't lie in flashy editing, it's more about pacing and conveyance. But that's another video for another time. The need for digital media work is constantly growing as well. Other people who need work just want to see what they're capable of, not the piece of paper that is supposed to come with it. This field is skill-based, and people are becoming way more skilled way faster because of the internet. Now this is what you won't find on YouTube so easily. You won't have some of the best memories of your life and some of the best networking opportunities. Something I'd like to remind most people watching this video is that there's a real world with real people out there. This isn't me insulting your intelligence either, of course you know that. But remember, it's not just you in this, and sometimes things have to be collaborative. You really don't know what the field is like until you have worked with people on set or a crew. Not only do you learn about how badly things can go on set, you also learn your weaknesses and what makes you fail way quicker, meaning you get better. Constantly having to work in groups can be stressful, but the level of introspection that comes with it is something everyone should experience. I've done the Four Points Film Competition, which is where you need to make a film within 72 hours on a weekend. Dealing with the stress of the time limit coupled with the tension between the producer, director, writer, and all the other crew puts into perspective what your limits are. I've worked in many environments with big crews to small crews to just myself, but the level of productivity is the change of factor here. Something I've observed about learning film is the amount of initiative you need to have to succeed. Often you are competing with others subconsciously. Most of the freelance jobs I've had were through my school. Rarely have I gotten one outside of it. Networking is one of the most important things in any field. And sure, you can do it online, but it's hard to establish a true connection if you are in person, especially for a job or artistic endeavor. And it's really hard to not have people have your back for these jobs as well. I'm very glad I got to meet some really good friends through this. Especially the one who drew this art right here that you're watching and helped transform my channel for the better. So, henceforth, if you're extremely passionate about film, I'd go to film school. But I think it's worth it if you think it's for you. But if not, don't worry, we got your back. Yeah.